Welcome to the part two of uh, IcePack geometric creation and setting up for solution. Uh, in part two, we are going to mesh the geometry that we created previously. Before we set up the mesh, let's change the display preferences. So you can see we have changed the display color of the background. Now we will generate our first mesh. To do that, we open the meshing. And select Measure HD. We're going to use the default values and we will just generate the mesh. Once the mesh has been generated, the number of elements and number of nodes are updated here. We can display the mesh. Create a cut plane. We are looking using the wire mesh options. You can see how the mesh looks like. Close to the fan zones and the other regions. You can change the mesh color. You can change the location of the cut region, and based on that, you can see how the mesh is at different location. Similarly, if you remove the base by mesh, keep the Y structure on. We change it to horizontal screen select. Creates different horizontal or vertical display cuts. Now we would like to see the surface mesh. Select the fans. The heat sink. Look at the surface mesh of all the selected objects. Solid fill option, and you can see how it looks like when the solids are filled up. Now we will look at the quality of the mesh. You can see the face alignment. It's very good. And we can change the minimum and maximum value. And replot them. And we can see how many elements are between these regions. And when you select that. You can actually. look exactly where those cells are. Similarly for skewness, you can see exactly where the bad cells are or the good cells. Now we will go back and generate a new mesh, which will be a little bit coarser. We'll see how that goes. 
you can see as we change to course, the minimum element in a gap or the edge values change. These are automatic values, but you are free to change them. And we generate the mesh. And you can see the number of elements have decreased. Around 25,000. Previously it was 45,000. Again, if you change this to really fine, change it to normal and reduce the cell sizes. Generate. Now you can see it will take a lot longer. It will be very long process to generate the mesh. If the process is allowed to continue, this mesh will be over 600 million cells. So I will interrupt it. Go back to our normal mesh, generate the mesh again. And we're going to add some local sizing. We'll use these bodies and add local sizing to them. Let's select the AGP heatsink first. Use per object parameter and we will add these sizing parameters. 15, 10, 10. Done. And generate the mesh again. So now we have a high number of elements gone up from 43,000 to 57,000. And if you display the mesh, let's move it up a little bit. You can see how the mesh looks like. You can also set the per object parameter from the project viewer. What you will have to do is select, right click, object parameters, and add the specific values for uh, cell refinement. We will try to understand what minimum gap is. So go ahead and create a block. I will click on the block, go to geometry, select start and length. Uh, I can see it's very close to this block. These bodies are very close. So we will try to control the mesh over here. You go to mesh, we generate the mesh. We'll select the bridge and the block. Go to display, display mesh. Want to see the surface mesh. Between selected objects, surface mesh color is this. So now when you see with this current setting, The gap between the two objects have been removed. There is no gap. So the gaps, which is less than the minimum gap, will be ignored. And hence it removes the unnecessary small cells. It increases computational time by a huge amount. The resolution it's effectively controlled by the object with higher priority. So in this case, it's been controlled by this object.
which has a higher priority. So now let's go back and change the minimum gap in the X direction. Generate the mesh again. And display. And now you can see the gap is present. And you have a fluid region between them. Also, because you have smaller cells, you have higher number of cell count. Now the most effective way of eliminating gaps is by snapping geometry. So let's select block one. Change this to start and end. Short. So now what we will do is we will make it inactive. We will try to use the macro to automatically set mesh settings. So let's go to macro, productivity, automatic mesh settings. medium and accept and we have 170,000 cells Go to display and how the mesh looks like That's how we create a mesh and control the meshing strategy in IcePack. Thank you.